Let's dive right into it this morning. We begin with the major step from the House Committee investigating the January 6 attack, issuing subpoenas for five sitting Republican lawmakers who have refused to cooperate in the investigation, including the top Republican in the House, Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy. Congressman Andy Biggs of Arizona, Scott Perry of Pennsylvania, Jim Jordan of Ohio, and Mo Brooks of Alabama, seen on January 6th firing up the crowd before the attack on the Capitol, all being compelled to testify. With the exception of ethics committee investigations in the past, the subpoenas are believed to be the first ever issued to sitting members of Congress. The panel has said the congressmen, all allies, of course, of former President Donald Trump, have information critical to its probe of the January 6th attack. They all have dismissed the investigation as illegitimate. Here is how some of them reacted to news that they had been subpoenaed. I have not seen the subpoena. I guess they sent it to you guys before they sent it to me. Um, look, my view on the committee has not changed. They're not conducting a legitimate investigation. It seems as though they just want to go after their political opponents. And the fact that they send it to the press before they send it to the members just proves it's all about headlines. This whole thing's a charade. Well, I think this is an illegitimate committee, that, and, and they don't really have the authority to, to issue subpoenas, in my opinion. So. So uh, we don't want to dignify what they're what they're doing. This has been a, a witch hunt from day one. This is an attempt to go after political uh, enemies instead of trying to get at the truth. Congressman Brooks of Alabama said yesterday he had not been served yet and would wait to respond until then. Congressman Jordan of Ohio also has not responded. The panel claims he had at least one and possibly many communications with Donald Trump on January 6th. Jordan previously has told the committee he has no relevant information to share. We'll see about that. The chairman of the committee, Congressman Benny Thompson, said there have been no conversations about contempt if the congressmen do not comply and that he expects them to answer those subpoenas. Let's bring in congressional investigations reporter for The Washington Post, Jackie Alemany. She is an MSNBC contributor as well. Jackie, it's great to see you. So uh, this is splashy, of course, because of the names involved, especially Kevin McCarthy, who may well be the speaker. Speaker of the House here in a few months, but not totally unexpected. These were key figures on January 6th who have said either publicly or have been reported to have had conversations with Donald Trump leading up to January 6th during the attack and then after. What is the significance here and does the committee actually expect to hear from them? Yeah, Willie, uh, you know, I'm not sure that the select committee believes that any of these members are actually going to appear, but what they communicated to reporters yesterday was after really months of deliberation that they felt like they needed to give Congressman uh, and, and House Minority Leader McCarthy uh, and, and this full group the opportunity to respond to evidence that they had found throughout the investigation. They had already issued voluntary requests for McCarthy, Scott Perry, Jim Jordan uh, months ago, actually at the end of last year, and uh, had let those requests linger for quite some time. But it's clear that along the way they've found evidence that they simply cannot ignore uh, that involves uh, and indicts these lawmakers in some way, uh, which is why you're seeing them now escalate this and, and call them in uh, via subpoenas. Um, you know, lawmakers yesterday, Democratic lawmakers at least, did not want to even uh, flirt with the contempt conversation and what they're going to do if these lawmakers decide not to comply with these subpoenas. Um, but, you know, part of the reason why they held off for so long on issuing the subpoenas was because they didn't want to get into ex protracted litigation and extend the investigation. Uh, but they've clearly made the calculus that in the interest of democracy and their investigation that they needed to, to take further steps to bring them in. So, Elise, as I say, it's obviously significant to call sitting members of Congress with subpoenas. But, I mean, these guys we know from tapes that we've already heard, from reporting in the media that they were talking to Donald Trump during the attacks. Mo Brooks actually said publicly, Trump asked me to rescind the 2020 elections and immediately put him back in the White House. I mean, he just said that out loud. Well, and also Jim Jordan had conversations with Donald Trump yep. on January 6th. And Kevin who, McCarthy. Exactly. So what happened in those conversations? And Jackie, it's obvious that, you know, these members have plenty of information that would be tantalizing to the January 6th commission committee, frankly. They know what happened and 
they know exactly where the bodies are buried, basically, so to speak. They aren't talking, though, and it doesn't look like they're going to talk, and this could be a protracted legal battle. How does that play out if they do have to charge them with contempt? And will it be a months-long process? Could it even extend, you know, past midterms? Yeah, Elise, that is the key question. Um, before I get into, you know, mapping out what that process looks like, though, you just remind me, I do think that it's important to note that some of these members, particularly um, people like Congressman Scott Perry of Pennsylvania, were the key conduit from the House GOP conference and, and Republican lawmakers to the White House. It was Scott Perry who was directly advocating uh, various White House officials to install a Trump loyalist, Jeffrey Clark, um, who was exchanging conspiracy theories uh, with Scott Perry and uh, was advocating to seize voting machines on the basis of, again, um, you know, very conspiratorial fringe theories uh, that, that had not, you know, been substantiated in any way. That being said, if lawmakers on the House committee decide uh, that they're going to hold these members in contempt for not cooperating with the subpoenas, which you know, it looks like is probably going to be the case. Then they're going to have to take a full House vote. That's then going to make it to the Department of Justice. And then the Department of Justice is going to have to make that final decision on whether or not they're going to actually prosecute these referrals. Uh, we also know that right now, Attorney General Merrick Garland is sitting on some other important referrals, including the contempt referral of Mark Meadows, Peter Navarro, and Dan Scavino. That's been lingering for some time now. Um, so if the House does ultimately make these referrals, uh, Merrick Garland and has almost got a dozen decisions that he's got to make on his plate, a lot of them extremely politically loaded. Hey, Jackie, good morning. It's Jonathan. Uh, hey, John. Charging in a contempt would obviously be an escalation, but it was pointed out that the idea of just issuing these subpoenas is sort of a no-lose situation for some of the Democrats in the committee with this thought, that if the Republicans take control, back control of the House this fall, which is expected, uh, that therefore, if they were to defy the subpoenas now, they'd be setting a precedent for Democrats to do the same when surely the GOP is going to be issuing a bunch of subpoenas in random investigations uh, this fall if they were to take control, looking into the Biden administration and so on. So I want to get your take on that, but also give us an update as to the public hearings that we should expect from the January 6th committee. Are they still on track for early June? Yeah, look, that, that's potentially true. And I know that lawmakers on the committee and their staff have already been uh, bracing for potential subpoenas and investigations if Republicans do take back the majority in November. They've all been extremely careful in that regard. Um, but I also think that the, the conversation that lawmakers on the committee are privately having is one that's a, a little bit more, uh, you know, with a sense of patriotism and duty and obligation to their roles uh, and the American people, which is that if these lawmakers were engaged in a conspiracy to overthrow, defraud the government uh, and, and stop the certification of the Electoral College with with no basis, um, that the American people ultimately deserve to know that. And it, from all accounts and from what Chairman Benny Thompson told reporters yesterday, the committee has collected evidence that indicates as such whether or not they ultimately make criminal referrals or how far they went in uh, this effort to overturn the results of the elections is another conversation, but that the American people deserve to know the full extent uh, that these lawmakers participated in January 6th. And, and and which is why I think they decided, you know what, we have to do this at the end of the day out of sort of a sense of patriotic duty. That being said, right now all eyes and, and preparation is on uh, these June public hearings. Those are supposed to start on June 9th. There's going to be eight of them. The committee is currently uh, working to create sort of a narrative arc and mission since the public still has not yet even coalesced around a cohesive narrative of what exactly happened uh, in the lead up to June uh, to January 6th and what happened in the aftermath. Also, uh, that narrative is being shaped around this idea that, you know, the insurrection is still currently happening in some regards with Republican lawmakers continuing to propagate unsubstantiated claims of election fraud and trying to pass legislation uh, in various battleground states on the unsubstantiated basis of a lot of these uh, conspiracy theories that are still in the bloodstream. All right, the Washington Post, Jackie Alamini, all over the story for us this morning. Thanks so much, Jackie. Great to see Thanks, you. Really.